Boxing Truth here, back with another video. Make sure to smash that like button, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Alright, let's talk about Ryan Garcia. Fresh off easy work over Javier Fortuna, six round stoppage win in what was pretty much one of the more easier fights to bet on and predict. If you got that line on Ryan by stoppage, either he could have gotten decent odds by stoppage, one to six, four to six, congratulations. It was one of the easiest fights to bet on. I was practically looking for lines when the fight was first announced, already knew what was going to occur. Garcia by stoppage was an absolute lock. It was really a matter of when he was going to stop him, what round he was going to stop him. But he could have gotten decent odds just to pick him by stoppage. It wasn't really that high, so... But now, what's going to be next? Make sure to follow me on Twitter as well. I'm more active on there. Make sure to uh, go follow me on Twitter for some bold boxing takes. I don't block anybody. I'm not sensitive. I don't care if people disagree or unfollow because I made fun of your favorite fighter. It's not that serious to me. These are just prize fighters. At the end of the day, they're not going to pay your rent, okay? Whether they, you talk good about them, you talk shit about them, it's just entertainment. For me and I don't take none of this seriously especially when it comes to boxes you know I'm not a fanboy Th those days are long gone I don't really you know I'm trying to profit you know I got that Dwyer mindset we just trying to profit and sometimes we get it wrong but most of the times we get it right and a lot of the times we get robbed you know we we're we're messing with a corrupted sport and uh this fight is definitely a fight where ryan will have to sacrifice in order to make this fight happen because he is not the a side in this fight no a fight between him and tank davis honestly i honestly feel ryan beats tank all day every day I've been feeling that way for quite some time ever since I saw Gervonta get a gift against Isaac Cruz Tank didn't beat Isaac Cruz he broke his hand in the fight and it pretty much cost him he lost 7-5 on my card not a highway robbery but you know consider the corruption Isaac just coming in as a replacement opponent there, were, there was no way he was gonna get that decision but Tank's coming off two bad shit performances where he got a gift against Cruz and he was getting his ass whooped. <laughs> he was getting whooped, outboxed, and he looked absolutely terrified of Roly Romero. I mean, it was an absolute embarrassment despite him getting the knockout victory. I mean, I did not like one second of Gervonta's performance. I didn't like the way he looked when he walked out of, out to the ring. He looked absolutely scared to death. I've never seen a fighter so fucking scared in my life that I've, I'm completely off the, the tank bandwagon. I mean, I, I always felt he had potential, had great pound for pound physical talent, but mentally there's just something wrong with the kid. He's not mentally all there, and that's why... Mayweather and LRB and Mayweather promotions have been very selective with the opponents to the point where they've made some mistakes. Barrios was almost too big, but he's trash. So Tank was able to knock him out. Cruz was, was a little too tough, and they, they almost cost him. But of course, you know, the judges are on the payroll, so it wasn't really that big of a risk. But this is a huge risk between for Ryan. For Tank to get on to take on Ryan. Ryan's so much bigger. He's got the range advantage. He's got the length advantage. He's sharp. He's accurate. He's a very good counter puncher, and he has a great left hook. So this is the type of fight where whoever executes and lands first is going to win the fight. Now Tank, what he does have is I would say he has a pretty good chin. The intriguing thing about this fight is Tank will always have a puncher's chance. He's like a lightweight Wilder, but with more skills. 
but he can be outboxed and he can get frustrated in that ring. So if that happens, you have a great chance of beating Tank, which is why they're very selective with the opponents. If they put him in there with a guy that frustrates him, it's over. He's just not going to be able to overcome that. Devin Haney is a guy that will frustrate him, but he has a puncher's chance in that fight. Unfortunately, Mayweather does not want to make that fight. But this fight, Tank has a puncher's chance. He can catch Ryan with, with something big and possibly knock him out. But you can say the same, the same could be said the other way around. I mean, Ryan has that type of power. He's got that type of physicality. And he has physical advantages over Tank. So, is the fight going to be next? Most likely not. It's a very... A lot of egos involved, a lot of dick measuring between the promoters and the people that are involved in this fight, even the networks, man. I mean, Showtime doesn't even want to have a conversation about doing a co-production. Even though it's one of the bigger fights out there, even though the zone has some flaws, but one thing you can say that's good about them and what they do bring to the table is their social media platform. I mean, look at their subscribership. They're one of the biggest boxing channels out there. Look at the views that they get. Over almost 2 million uh, views from, from that one Javier Fortuna video. So they do bring something to the table, marketing-wise. Showtime has their platform, which is well-established. They will be able to provide billboards and, and the traditional marketing platforms, like commercials and shit. That's the one thing where the zone struggles, like, for me to find out when a fight's happening on the zone, I have to go on Twitter. I have to go online. I have to freaking go on their ugly schedule outlook to find out when the fight's happening. They don't have any... It's like I can't find a commercial or anything or any promo outside of the internet for the zone fight. Or Showtime, they have their network, their channel, their linear channel. You can watch an episode of one of their popular series and, and something pops up of, for boxing that week. The zone doesn't have that, which is really affecting their, their, uh, it's, it's affecting their numbers in the U.S. of their, are they, are they gonna be able to grow in the near future or anytime soon? Is it, hasn't been successful, there's been a lot of debate about that when it comes to the zone's business in the U.S., but they gotta find a way. Of course, Floyd's gonna make it difficult. The judge is going to be picked. The gloves are going to be picked. The ring size, all that bullshit. So, Ryan's going to have to overcome a lot of bullshit in order for this fight to happen. Maybe, might even have to... Uh, I don't think that's possible with him under contract to Golden Boy, but they got to find a way. But, I got Ryan all day over Tank. I think he's a bad... A bad matchup for Tank overall. Tank will always have a puncher's chance, but the size, speed, punching power, and counter punching skills of Ryan will be too much for Tank to overcome. And that's one of the reasons why the fight hasn't been made, because Ryan's a threat to Tank. It's really a threat out there to every lightweight in the division. But this is the fight to make. It's, it's for bragging rights. It's for a lot of a lot of Benjamins. This is also for bragging rights for the promoters. Like, yo, my fighters, I breed better fighters than you, bro. That's what Oscar could say to Floyd if Ryan whoops one of his fighters. Like, my promotional stable is stronger than you, yours. So there's a lot of bragging rights when it comes to this fight. But can they make a deal? I don't know, man. Showtime, the zone. Floyd, Oscar, LRB, Tank, you know, he's got to be the A-side, so I don't see it. It ain't going to happen next. The most fight, the fight you're going to get next is going to be Ryan Garcia versus Jojo Diaz, which is a great fight. I mean, Jojo Diaz is low-key a great fighter. It's just, it's, he's never going to get that recognition for it. He's a really good fighter. But he's, I would say, undersized against Ryan in that fight. But it's a great fight if it does happen next. 
I have no idea who Tank's gonna fight, man. I mean, they better not be trying to recycle uh, Abnamaras for him to fight. That would be absolute bullshit. And but you know, his fans accept it. I mean, they just accept that he's a protected fighter, that he's not gonna fight Devin Haney or challenge himself against the best lightweights out there, and he won't even challenge himself against Ryan. Coming up with all these obstacles for the fight not to happen. I mean, Oscar is calling for the fight to happen. The, the zone suits are calling for the fight to happen. But there's so much resistance from the other side. Showtime has to be on their terms. Has to be on their network. It has to be at this way, that way. He's got to bow down to me. He's got to do all this bullshit just for the fight to happen. So, is this fight going to happen next? No. I don't even think it happens anytime soon. I would say maybe next year. After Tank is done feasting on whatever leftovers they have at PBC. They're running out of names. They're running out of ideas. So sooner or later this fight may eventually happen. And maybe even the, the networks can actually uh, find a way to make it work for a co-production. And what would be the first ever between Showtime's era... And a new streaming service. There will be a first co-production between the Zone and Showtime ever, and it will be very interesting to see if they can actually pull that deal off. But yeah, Ryan all day over Tank. This is Boxing True. I'm out.